Hey guys, so I decided to switch to Linux for 30 days to give it a shot, and this is going to be a video about my initial setup. So here we go. Alright guys, so first of all, please hit that subscribe button. I'm going to be putting out a bunch of new videos. So today I'm going to talk about my initial setup for Linux. Every once in a while I play with Linux and I mess with it for you know, a little while and then I end up switching back to Windows. And some of the biggest reasons for that are, number one, the, the games. Um, some games work great on Linux and then some just aren't available for Linux. And number two was the video editing. Um, I was trying to use Kden Live on Linux, but there was always problems with it. But the latest version of Kden Live has been totally stable and actually really saved my butt the other day. I had some footage that I shot in uh, 4K on my new phone here, and I could not get it to edit correctly in Premiere, HitFilm, or DaVinci Resolve. Uh, because of the variable, uh, variable bit rate on the phones, the audio would always get out of sync. But I loaded into Linux, loaded into Kden Live, I was able to edit it, no problem, put in the transitions, my custom intro, all that stuff, and it worked great. So I'm going to go through my initial setup here. First of all, the version that I chose is uh, Budgie Remix. So what that is, is it's basically Ubuntu 16.04, that's the version I'm using, um, because it's the long-term support version. And it has the Budgie Desktop. The Budgie Desktop is one of my favorite desktops. Um, it's very uh, GNOME-like, but it's not um, as much in your face. It's kind of out of the way. It's kind of a minimalist desktop, which I really like, but it has a really nice modern interface. Um, and it just kind of, it's the kind of desktop that's there when you need it and out of your way when you don't. And I really, really like that. All right, guys, so here we are in the desktop. The Budgie desktop, when you initially started, it looks pretty much like this. Um, it has a a default uh, background and then the plank here is over on the left hand side so when I set it up the first thing that I do is move that plank to the bottom because you know it's just a preference thing if you like it along the left that's fine there's nothing wrong with that but I personally like it along the bottom so I move it down there the next thing I do is um, once I get my apps loaded I set up the folders because uh, out of the box, just dragging stuff into Plank, it um, doesn't support folders. There's a way to set it up, and I have another video on that, so I'll put a uh, I'll put a card up here so you can go check out that video. But basically, like I have this folder here for my video production stuff, um, that just makes it a lot more handy to access that stuff. Um, the next thing I usually do is set up hotkeys. So I like to have hotkeys. You know, I'm used to this on Windows, where I hear Windows E and it brings up kind of a file manager. And um, this is a, another one that I use because I'm always going into the terminal. I hit uh, Windows T, it brings up a, a terminal. So it's really easy in Budgie to, to set those up. If you just go into settings here, and then keyboard, and then go to the shortcuts tab. So to uh, launch terminal, the super key is the Windows key on your keyboard. So you just click that, new accelerator super t and there you go that's all set um there's two ways to do the the um explorer kind of kind of view um you can set it up here to go to your home folder so you can click here and do the the super e for uh, your home folder or you can set up a custom shortcut and i did it in here and uh, i'm going to get into why i did that in here in the next point or one of the next points actually the next thing I like to do is install Chromium. Um, Budgie Remix comes with uh, Firefox, and I'm not a big Firefox fan. Uh, some of the, the utilities that I use on my home server have real-time updates for when things are processing, and for whatever reason, those don't work in Firefox, but they work great, great in Chrome and Chromium. So um, the next thing I do is load Chromium on there. I still have Firefox on here. I'm not against Firefox. I just prefer Chromium. So what I was saying with the file managers about why I, I did the shortcut the way I did it is out of the box, um, Budgie comes with the GNOME files, which is, I think it's kind of a fork off of uh, Nautilus. And it's good, it's a really good um, file manager, but it's really, really limited. Um, this is one one place that the minimalist aspect of the, the uh, this desktop I'm not crazy about it, is with the file manager. So what I did was I installed Nemo, and I used that as my file manager. And the reason for that is there's a lot more options in here. You can access 
a lot more options directly. There's different options for viewing. And one thing that I really like is this extra pane. So if you're copying files back and forth, instead of having two windows side by side, you, you can use the same window and have a pane on one side and a pane on the other side, and then you can literally just drag and drop between them. Um, it makes it really easy to, for getting out to network servers. So if you have a, a Windows share um, that uses the, the Samba utility or Samba uh, protocol in Linux, you can just do SMB and then like my server is 192.168.1.10. I can go out there and I can see all my public shares and I have some, some shares that are hidden there too and I can access those as easy. Um, it, it just pops up, it asks you for your username and password, you put it in there and you can tell it to remember it forever or use it just for that session. Um, it's, a, it's a very nice file browser and literally to install it in here, you do sudo apt get install nemo. That's all you have to do. You hit enter. It's going to ask you if you're sure you want to do it. Hit yes. It's going to load a bunch of stuff on there and then you got Nemo. So the reason why I did the, uh, the shortcut the way I did is because I wanted to specify that the Windows E would be used for Nemo and not uh, open up the, the default files. So the apps that I absolutely need to do this 30 day thing is number one, I need Kden Live. I need a video editor, and of all the Linux video editors, Kden Live is by far my favorite, especially since the other day it saved my butt. And uh, if you've never seen Kden Live, I'm not gonna go into it here. I am gonna do a, a couple of tutorials on it. But it's a, uh, a very, very nice uh, NLE where it handles pretty much any file format you throw at it. And what I really, really like about this is this is one of the few video editors that I don't have to pre-process my video to edit. Premiere, HitFilm, um, DaVinci Resolve, even uh, Filmora, all those I have to pre-process my video or else like scrubbing through it and, and things like that is just completely painful or I run into issues like I did the other day where the, uh, you know, where the, the audio got out of sync. And um, with Caden Live, I don't have those problems and make sure you get the uh, 12, 16.12.3 version because there was a bunch of bug fixes in this version and this has been rock solid. I've always had problems with Caden Live crashing and I edited video for about two hours the other night and it was 4K video and I had, didn't have one crash, one stutter, nothing. It was rock solid, a beautiful thing. So the other things that I need for my um, production related stuff is GIMP. I need a, a image editor. Um, and even on Windows, I use GIMP. I, I'm not a Photoshop guy. GIMP does everything I need. Um, GIMP is not a Photoshop replacement. It's a Photoshop alternative. It's not quite as powerful as Photoshop, but for me, it's plenty powerful enough. It does everything that, that I needed to do. Next thing is uh, Audacity. Uh, Audacity is a free video or audio editor. I use this one in whatever operating system I'm into because this is uh, just like GIMP, this is cross-platform as well. And uh, it's just a really nice, um, simple, well, simple yet powerful audio editor. Um, and again, you can just install that from the, uh, the Ubuntu app store or do it through the command line with the, the sudo um, app get install. Uh, Kden Live, I went through OBS. That's what I'm using to record the screen right now. And you can also do streaming. So I'm hoping at some point I'm going to be doing some live streaming and uh, OBS will come in handy for that as well. But all the video that you're seeing recorded of my desktop, that's all done in OBS. You can see it running, running over here in the background. The next thing is this Nix note. So I use Evernote to um, manage all of my notes, uh, you know, whether it has to do with the the channel or something else. And Nixnote is a Linux Evernote client because there is no official Evernote client, but actually Nixnote, uh, it's been around for a while. This is Nixnote 2 and it actually works really well. Um, it's text only, so it doesn't have all the capabilities of Evernote where you can, you know, do uh, pictures and, and all that kind of stuff. But, you know, for just quick notes and keeping it all in one place and cross platform because you can use the Evernote client on your, your phone or Windows or Mac or go to the website or whatever, it, it's uh, pretty nice. 
So those of you that are looking for kind of a one note alternative, this might be something to look into as well because uh, I was using one note and I ran into that same issue. Um, the other thing I need is an office application. You know, um, I keep a lot of the this research that I do for my videos in uh, Word documents and Excel spreadsheets. And there is no Microsoft Office for Linux, but there is LibreOffice and WPS Office. I prefer LibreOffice, but it's a full office suite. It's got a um, word processor, uh, calc is kind of like Excel, and it has a Visio type, uh, type application, and then a PowerPoint like application. I say like because they're not quite as powerful as the, as the Microsoft suite. But again, for what I do, it's plenty powerful enough and has all the features that I need. Um, the next thing I need is Steam because I do like to play games. I'm not super heavy gamer, but I do like to play games. So I have uh, Steam loaded on here and then I loaded uh, some of the, these, um, some of the, my Steam games in here. I'm going to be doing some comparisons, uh, videos coming up of how these games perform in Linux versus Windows. And I'm gonna be checking the same games on the same machine in both environments and seeing, you know, checking the frames. There's some games that are not available in Linux. It's just the way it is. You can kludge it together through Wine. And that is my only caveat for this 30 day switch is for those games, like I play Battlefield 1, I'm not gonna try to get that to run in Wine in Linux. I'm gonna switch to, to Windows for that. That's the only caveat that I'm giving myself for this 30 days in Linux is if I wanna play a game that's just not available in Linux, I'm not gonna try to get it to run through Wine or, or play in Linux or whatever. I'm gonna boot into Windows and play it natively because you're going to get the best performance that way. But the other ones, if there's a game in Steam that's available on both Linux and Windows, I'm going to play it in Linux. Um, the next thing is, is Minecraft. Minecraft is kind of a pain um, to install because you, you, you can get the jar file and then you have to copy it into your applications directory and then if you want it in your menu, menu you have to manually create it in the menu. There is a great um, installer if you're using Ubuntu it's uh, you know Minecraft Ubuntu installer if you just go out and search for that real quick let me show you use this unofficial Minecraft installer from Minecraft installer peeps team just go into here I'll put this in the description as well but if you just add this PPA and then do uh, sudo apt-get install minecraft dash installer it'll download minecraft install it put it in the menu for you you're good to go um, while I mention the menu one thing I want to mention about budgie is at least in this version um, from what I was reading online they kind of disabled the auto refresh on the menu because it was causing uh, some bugs so when you install something it doesn't automatically show up in the menu so what i've found to do um, there may be an easier way to do this and if there is please put it in the comments but i just come over here just go to uh, log out it brings you back to the login screen you log in again and then the that refreshes the menu and everything's in there there may be a way a command line to refresh the menu i don't know that and again if you do please put that in the comments all right, guys, so that's about it. I'll put uh, links to some of the stuff that I installed in the in the uh, description. And uh, hopefully you guys enjoyed this. Keep a lookout for some Linux videos coming up in the next few days. And if you have any questions or comments, please leave them below. Please uh, rate and subscribe so you can keep, uh, you know, get notified of the, the videos that are coming out in the next few days. And I will see you guys in the next one. Thanks a lot.